Hello people, today I am doing a little postpartum prep. I'm filming some freezer meals and this video ended up being, oh, I don't know, way, way too long. So I thought I would cut it up into two separate parts. In this video, I think I have four or five recipes and in the next video I have four or five recipes. I, I should have counted before I started talking to you. But, freezer um, meals are one of my top postpartum must-haves and I feel like I'm very far along in my pregnancy. So I'm about 35 weeks and I feel like it's about that time to start making freezer meals. So um, but <laughs> I'd rather get them out of the way. I know some people wait until way later to make them but I'm a planner. Anyway, I hope you enjoy this video. Thank you guys so much for watching and make sure to check out part two. Oh my gosh, my feet are already swollen. Okay, so all you need for this, this is one of our go-to meals. All you need is a cream of chicken soup. This is zesty Italian, you just need one of these. It's a zesty Italian salad dressing mix. It's delicious. And then eight ounces of cream cheese. We use like tofu cream cheese because we're dairy free, but you can use obviously what you have and then i have two chicken breasts in here but you can put three and maybe even four this makes a lot of gravy so i'm just going to dump everything in here mix it up and add it to the bag and then it makes it easier if it's softened but i like the challenge and then one packet of seasoning this is one of our favorite crock pot meals and it's super simple to put together and once it's finished like all you have to do is add a starch like rice or potatoes even or just rolls and then some kind of vegetable and dinner is good to go usually with this i do frozen veggies and just throw them in the microwave and seriously dinner is ready in like 0.5 seconds i mean aside from like the four to eight hours it takes to cook it <laughs> in the crock pot, but that's all dormant time, right? Dormant. All right, now that it's all mixed, I'm just going to throw it into this bag. I already froze the chicken because I didn't want it to go bad in my, fr in my fridge because I jumped the gun and bought the chicken way too early. Anyway, I labeled it with my chicken scratch handwriting because the bag's all wet and whatever. Anyway, label it whatever you want and then just just dump it in. I wish all the freezer meals were this easy with prep work, but I know that's not the case. Okay, so there it is, one done. It doesn't look that pretty, but I promise you it tastes absolutely delicious. On to the next. Okay, next one I'm going to make is another staple for us. Hi there, I was it going to do this whole video like without showing my face, just my hands, but um, I figured if I talk about what I'm making for like 30 seconds, it would be, Anyway, I might as well just look at you face to face. Anyway, the, ne the next meal I'm going to make is another staple in our house. My husband is allergic to casein, which is a byproduct of beef. So it's in dairy, cheese, milk, butter, all the delicious things in life. So one of his old favorite meals was fettuccine alfredo. And I tried for years to come up with a dairy-free version for him to enjoy. And <clears throat> it took a lot of tries until I finally found this recipe or some version of this recipe. And we just fell in love with it. And that was like two, three years ago. Um, anyway, so it's been a staple in our house ever since. And turns out it's way more healthy than regular fettuccine Alfredo. And for us, like we can't tell the difference in the taste it's so good i promise you if you try this you won't regret it so here's what you're going to need for this one okay so you're going to need i use two bags of frozen um cauliflower you can use fresh if you want but i just find buying it frozen it's just more convenient i have it in the freezer for whenever we want to make this i we also use the veggie uh parmesan cheese you don't need a whole ton of this and of course you can use regular Parmesan cheese too. You don't need to be dairy free. Um, some garlic and I cut up and cooked a bunch of chicken the other day. So probably about a pound of chicken and then some pasta, any type of pasta that you like. 
I'm going to bow ties, keeping it fancy. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do is take your cauliflower and just dump them. I have a con oh, I have an induction oven, so it gets hot like so friggin' fast. Anyway, just dump in both bags of cauliflower and then a little bit of water, half a cup, third of three fourths cup. I don't know. I would normally use my big pot for this, but right now it's holding all of the spaghetti sauce that I made. So I'm going to have to make do with this. You can also do this in the microwave. I'm sure it would probably be a little easier. I did it in the microwave. Anyway, let that cook down and get soft. Okay, meanwhile, while the cauliflower is getting soft, you're just going to want to, like this is your time where you cook the chicken. But first, before you cook the chicken, add some olive oil to a pan like a couple tablespoons. This is going in the sauce, so this just adds flavor. Um, and then I just have like six cloves of garlic in here. You can add as much or as little as you want. And then when you're done with the garlic, just let that cook for a couple of minutes. Um, it cooks really quickly. And when that is done, use the same pan to just cook the chicken in, but my chicken is already previously cooked. So Okay, so now that it's all cooked, I'm going to add my garlic and olive oil into a blender. And then I'm going to add the cauliflower straight in here as well. Yep, that worked out. Okay, so all of the cauliflower went in and then you just add milk. We use um, almond milk. Use original, don't use vanilla or anything like that. Use normal milk if you have it or even cream, half and half, whatever you like. And then just some, that was probably like, I don't know, a quarter cup, a third cup. It was, it was whatever was left. And then some Parmesan cheese. And that adds to the flavor. And then also some pepper because that really adds to the flavor as well. It's also nice to have a dairy-free option for when, um, just in case the baby has like a dairy intolerance. Sometimes infants can be really sensitive to dairy. Uh, so yeah, this is gonna be a great postpartum meal. Okay, so just pop the lid on and then start her up. Sounds like my machine is going to like explode. Okay, so this is super duper thick. So I'm gonna get some more milk to add. All right, so I just have some coconut milk, again, original. And just, all right, let's see if this is any better. This is still really thick too. I don't measure. You don't need to measure either. It's your kitchen. Do what, do what you want. <laughs> okay, so now that my water's boiling, I'm going to add my pasta. I wish I had my big pot. I wish I had thought ahead about that. Uh, but that seems to fit pretty good, pretty nicely. So I'm just gonna stir that with my spoon. All right, so next step, I legit almost poured the entire pot of pasta in here, like water and everything. So make sure you drain your pasta. I cooked it just a little al dente, just to make sure that when I reheat it, that the noodles aren't like soggy. Mm, pasta dishes are so good. All right, and then pour on your sauce. I might have some sauce left over, or we might just make this extra saucy. And then you might as well, while you're at it, add in your chicken before you stir it all up and then you're just gonna have to stir it twice, right? Why do something twice when you don't have to? Pound, sure. Good enough. Good enough for me. Stir that in. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. Mmm. All right, there you have it. Your pasta, your meat, your veggies, all in here. And the kids will never even know. I even have a bunch left over. I feel like if I would have gone shy a little bit with this sauce, I could have made two big pans, but I think I'm just gonna make um, like an eight by eight smaller pan with what I have left and just some noodles and chicken. Anyway, you don't care. That's that, I'm gonna cover it and label it. See, it says cauliflower Alfredo and then I put the date. So I'm gonna throw that in my freezer. Next up is another family favorite. I'm gonna make lasagna. Um, it's tofu lasagna, so it's a little healthier than normal lasagna, but if you don't like tofu or don't want to buy tofu, you can totally do regatta, I don't care your house it's your food it's your uh, your belly 
Anyway, and then I also have the cream cheese again. You mix these two together and add some spices, which is not shown, but you add some spices, tastes just like ragouta cheese. It's delicious. And then I found these, woo, bumped my tripod there. I found these oven ready lasagna noodles. What? I don't have to freaking cook the noodles. This is the best thing. My dad showed me these and I've been using them ever since. Saves so much time, energy, effort, everything. And then some cheese. And back here I have some homemade pasta sauce and a noodle right there. Um, this is a family recipe, so I can't share it with you. I'm just kidding. <laughs> if you want the recipe, I can totally share it with you. Oh my gosh, opening that up just like reminds me of home right now. Um, anyway, so I have like ground beef and sausage in there and onions and you know, all the good stuff that goes into the sauce, Sunday sauce. Um, you can use canned pasta sauce, whatever you have. You know what I mean? Do what you do. You work with what you have. All right, I threw my cream cheese in there. And yes, this is the same bowl as before. Um, no, I'm not gonna do dishes if I don't have to. It adds flavor, you know what I mean? <laughs> so I'm gonna throw my tofu in there. I drained the little bit of water that um, comes in there. And I'm just gonna throw this in as well. All right, and then I'm gonna add some herbs before I completely combine it. Just some pepper. I have some Italian seasoning. Yum, and then some garlic powder, and then mix it up. Okay, here comes the fun part, assembling it. All right, so take these guys, line them across the bottom. I feel like I could add some down there. That's fun. All right, I'm gonna just fill in the gaps here. Oh, I should have put pasta sauce on the bottom. Too late. So just some pasta sauce here. A couple spoonfuls. Oh, I definitely should have put some on the bottom. The noodles are like spooning around, sliding all over the place. All right, now that the sauce is down, you're just gonna add half of the tofu mixture evenly across. All right, another line of noodle. All right, now some more sauce. Another layer of tofu. Okay, the last layer of noodles. There you go, helper. We have more noodles. Right here? Yep, more, more pasta. All right, and then just some cheese right on top. Wanna help? Okay, and I have learned if you're going to freeze and bake anything with cheese on top to put plastic wrap and then put tin foil on top of it. Just a tip so the cheese does not stick to the foil. All right, next up, another favorite, super simple. I did ground beef. We normally do ground turkey, and let me show you why. Holy crap. So I cooked a few pounds of ground beef the other day. And that is how much fat came out of it. What? That is disgusting. We haven't had beef in probably six years, like red meat, and that just made me want to vom. And anyway, um, we typically do ground turkey, but I've been low on iron, craving beef, so I did the beef, bought a whole bunch. I also have a mixed bag of veggies, cream of mushroom soup. I don't know if I normally do beef stock with my shepherd's pie. Did I say that we're making shepherd's pie? Super simple meal. <laughs> um, or if I normally do cream of mushroom, I can't remember, so I'm just gonna do cream of mushroom soup. And then I have some mashed taters right here. I kinda just wanna eat this by itself right now. This bowl is so hot. Anyway, super easy. All you're going to do, I kind of think that I should just get some beef stock because I think that's what I normally do. Or I don't do stock. I don't do anything. I just mix the beef and the veggies. I don't know. That's what we're, this is what we're going to do today because that's what we're doing. Know what I mean? And some beef over here. What do you have that? Not a lot. That's a lot. Maybe we should get a bigger tray. I feel like I need to thin this out with some milk. What am I doing wrong, people? Tell me. 
she's going to add the veggies and I'm just going to keep mixing this up. Okay, so I made the executive decision to go with the bigger pan. It was just, that's a, that was a ton of meat. Um, yeah, so this will probably last like breakfast, lunch, and dinner. But I also added some garlic and pepper in there. So I'm just mixing that in. I also added just a couple tablespoons of water to thin out the um, soup a little bit. Next time. You tell me what I did wrong and we'll fix it next time. <laughs> Do these right on top. Now I feel like I didn't make enough mashed potatoes to cover the top. We'll see. We'll make it work. We'll make it work. All right, we made it work. The mashed potatoes are not as thick of a layer as I would like normally, but whatever, we'll get over that. It's delicious. Um, so I'm gonna, again, put some tin foil on this. I bought the pans with the lids, but I just feel like that takes up way too much space in the freezer. So I'm gonna put some tin foil on it and move on to the next. Hello again, guys. It is day two, I took a break. It's now the next morning, so if you see my robe peeking through, um, it's because that's the only thing that fits me right now. 